Okay, welcome to uh, the news conference of the Global Commission on Internet Governance at the conclusion of the two-day meeting here in Ottawa. My name is Fred Kuntz, I'm with CG. We have press kits available at the back of the room, including the uh, communique issued by the Commission at this meeting. We're also uh, webcasting this news conference and we've been alerted that other media are watching through this so they can pose questions if you're watching online to the live chat function on your screen and we'll transmit it to our two speakers here today. They are Carl Bilt, Chair of the Global Commission on Internet Governance, and Fen Osler Hampson, who is a Commissioner and also the Director of the Global Security and Politics Research Program at CG. And I'll turn it over to them for brief statements before we turn to the media questions. So over to you, Carl. Thanks very much. And um, briefly, we've had the third working meeting of the Global Commission here in Ottawa for a day and a half. We had previous meetings in Stockholm first and then in Seoul in South Korea. And what we do in the uh, planning of our work, we deal with different issues at the different uh, meetings that we have, and then we sum up the conclusions that we have in the communiques that we issue. Um, focus for the discussions here in Ottawa was what is called the ANA transition. This is highly detailed technical stuff, but it's highly political and extremely important. It means that the US government, which has played a certain role in the management, fairly theoretical, but still a role, in the management of the internet since it started, has declared its willingness to get rid of that particular role and hand it over to something else, provided that something else fulfills some criteria. This is extremely important for the global credibility of what is today the world's most important infrastructure network. And the way in which this transition handles with all of the technical details will be very important for the global credibility of the net. So what we did here was to spend quite some time in looking at models that are possible for how to hand over that uh, ultimate responsibility that today rests with the US Department of Commerce to the users themselves. And uh, you can see the result in this particular communique where we uh, propose a mechanism with a mechanism for independent and authoritative review in uh, looking at the decision making inside the existing structures so as to be certain that we can guarantee the functionality, the effectiveness, the independence and the transparency of the entire system. Uh, these are, I said, uh, both technically complex questions and politically very important. And we also underline the necessity of really doing this transition. Uh, it should occur uh, by September of next year, and uh, time is running. So uh, for all of that to be in place, there's a need to start moving on it. And uh, we underline the necessity of really doing that, because if it is delayed, there's always the risk associated with the US political system or associated with other factors that uh, things will go off in other directions. Then, of course, the actual transition uh, could then occur over a somewhat longer time period. I'm not going to spend much more on this, which has been the focus of uh, our activities here. We also spent some time planning the further activities of the um, Commission. It is, as you know, a two-year endeavor. So we will wind up and uh, publish all of our conclusions and all our recommendations in the spring of 2016. And uh, as things stand now, we'll have meetings during the next year in the Netherlands, in the United Kingdom, in South Africa, in India, and in uh, Brazil. So it is a fairly hectic work program, but I think it was a very important milestone that we passed during the meeting here in Ottawa today. Uh, yesterday, to be precise. Thank you, and over to Fenn. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, Carl has, uh, has said most of it. Uh, there's uh, a, a background paper uh, that accompanies uh, the communique that I would uh, recommend to all, which uh, uh, was uh, discussed uh, in great detail uh, at, uh, at the commission. Uh, one of the uh, principal authors of that paper, uh, Aaron Schull, uh, is here. Uh, he is uh, a senior <coughs> fellow at CG, also CG's uh, legal uh, counselor. And he and his uh, co-authors, uh, uh, which included uh, Paul Toomey, the former CEO of ICANN, which is the Internet Corporation for Sign Names and Numbers that manages, uh, uh, among other things, the top-level domain uh, name uh, system 
of the internet um, uh, 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 and, and the other uh, co-author is, uh, is uh, Christopher Yu, who is uh, a professor of commercial law at uh, 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 the University of uh, Pennsylvania Law School. Um, that paper uh, goes into uh, some detail uh, in, in the uh, challenges uh, of uh, migrating the uh, accountability uh, provisions uh, of uh, uh, the U.S. IANA contract and, uh, and suggests, uh, uh, and, and the Commission, I think it's fair to say, uh, endorse the proposal, uh, how those contracts uh, could be migrated uh, to uh, uh, ICANN and its IANA service uh, partners. Um, and um, uh, at the same time, uh, there was uh, recognition in the Commission that um, uh, in, the, uh, in the transition, uh, and those of you who have tracked the debate uh, closely, uh, there has been a lot of discussion, particularly in the context of uh, the controversy over uh, particular domain names, whether it's Amazon.com or uh, the French objections to uh, uh, a new uh, set of domain names, uh, .wine, .vin, uh, where they uh, made their uh, objections, uh, I would say, uh, quite, uh, quite clear at the uh, ICANN uh, London meeting uh, earlier uh, this year. Um, what, uh, what the Commission has come down on, uh, and I think it's, uh, it's important, is that uh, there does need to be an enhanced mechanism, uh, accountability mechanism, for independent and authoritative review uh, of the um, uh, decision-making uh, powers of ICANN, and that uh, there's a need for uh, uh, greater transparency uh, and uh, 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 an opportunity for uh, uh, what one might call the uh, application of the multi-stakeholder model, uh, which is, say, a bottom-up or participatory uh, policy-making process, and, um, and that um, uh, the strengthening of uh, the review mechanisms, uh, and it's essentially uh, uh, setting in place uh, a better system than we have now, for uh, reviewing uh, ICANN decisions in the event uh, there is a challenge uh, of those uh, decisions, particularly in the assignment of, uh, of top-level uh, domain names. And uh, uh, that mechanism is again spelled out more clearly in the paper, but it does, uh, it does argue that um, uh, uh, diversity, uh, bringing in internationally recognized experts, jurists, uh, through an independent and transparent review process would go a long way to addressing uh, what uh, 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 Minister Bilt uh, referred to as uh, the transparency legitimacy challenges that, uh, that uh, ICANN uh, uh, faces in, uh, in uh, uh, the ongoing highly politicized debate about the uh, uh, ICANN-IANA uh, NTIA transition. All right, thanks. Well, we'll open it up to media questions now, so uh, go ahead. Mike? Um, a question for, uh, well, I'm sure you can answer it, but perhaps uh, Mr. Bill. Um, I don't know if it's contained in here or not, or if it's a direction that you can go in, but on a broad level, uh, do you think that um, uh, governments should have the right to have access to user information on the internet, uh, such as uh, Different in different countries, but uh, if I take my own country, uh, that right is there under court order, yes. Uh, much the same way as we've had sort of legislation, legislation for tapping telephones uh, forever. Uh, but I think it is very important um, in this age where trust is uh, a commodity that should be handled with care, that uh, it is clear in all our, our countries that this is based on laws that have been adopted by the parliaments in a transparent manner, and that there are safeguards and there is oversight. 
uh, on the way in which these uh, rights that are there with the states are, are exercised. Uh, and this is, of course, an ongoing debate that we have in Europe. You see the debate in the US at the moment. And um, we will, as a commission, uh, look at these issues as well at one of our subsequent meetings. For the benefit of the webcast, I'll just repeat the question, which was, should governments have warrants to access user information? Uh, I think it's uh, fair to say that there's uh, 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 growing pressure in many countries, uh, including uh, Canada, to uh, strengthen those due process uh, provisions. Uh, and we've certainly seen that in the United States uh, in the uh, debate about the uh, so-called Freedom Act, uh, which again is to tighten due process uh, provisions when it comes to uh, intelligence and security services uh, and their ability to uh, not only hoover up information uh, or data on the, uh, uh, on the internet, uh, but also to uh, you know, <coughs> drill down into uh, uh, the correspondent and communications of private citizens. Um, the problem, and this is one that the Commission is, uh, is uh, obviously uh, going to take up, is uh, you know, in a world where electrons cross borders with impunity, uh, uh, how do you uh, ensure that um, those due, proce due process rights that you're prepared to give to your own citizens, uh, do they apply to non-citizens? And uh, that's an issue, uh, quite frankly, among the five eyes, the so-called five eyes, uh, uh, those countries uh, who share intelligence uh, among themselves. Um, you, know, uh, uh, you know, Canadians don't have the same <coughs> rights that Americans do, uh, and yet, uh, you know, the NT, uh, N NSA can, you know, read the mail of Canadians because those electrons will cross U.S. space uh, and jurisdiction uh, as well. So uh, that's going to be a big issue that uh, the Commission is going to take up is how do you how do you ensure greater uniformity uh, reciprocity might be a term uh, one could use so that uh, uh, citizens uh, in different jurisdictions particularly in democracies are treated equally oh it's going to, yeah uh, well uh, I mean it's it's going to be a huge challenge and, uh, and no, but it it is perfectly possible. Um, I mean, we, we, we all have legislation that regulates what our respective, be that intelligence or security authorities, can do. And uh, that is different in different countries so far, but I, I, I think, and I in previous capacity have initiated a global debate on certain principles that I think should be respected by at least all democracies in this particular respect then legal traditions can be somewhat different, of course, in the different countries. The structures can be somewhat different. Uh, but in, 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 in theory, it's perfectly possible to do. I mean, government agencies operate under the law. They should. Question from Sean. You mean in, in our community now? Yeah, yeah I mean, the, the fact that we have reached agreement on a model that we think is viable and, and workable for how the IANA transition should occur. Um, and this is sort of handing over de facto responsibility to the users themselves um, that the US government does hand over and that there's a credible process for doing that and that we also set up some sort of mechanism. Uh, but there are more details in reports than there are in the community here because some should have some leeway there. Um, a mechanism where we can sort of verify that uh, this process or these new ultimate powers that are there, uh, that they are handled in a way that safeguards the effectiveness and the transparency and the reli reliability of, of the net. So a practically workable mechanism for doing the honor transition. How does this happen? Does this just happen organically? Or have, we talked about, you talked about the organization that, yeah. and, and as the US government has the supposed to take on this role, but does this just sort of appear on its own, or does this have to be appointed <coughs> or commissioned? Or, or no, I, I, it, it, it so happens that the US government just sort of leaves it. Um, that's the easy thing from, from the technical point of view. Uh, but the U.S. government is not going to do that if the U.S. government is not assured that what is then there fulfills certain criteria. 
which are very reasonable criteria. We support those criteria. And, and among those is sort of the simple one, it must work. We must be able to rely on it. And it should not be open to capture by any single state or by an international organization or things like that. I mean, what is called the multi-stakeholder approach, this uh, somewhat less than sexy term that is used, can be translated into no single interest should be able to grab control over the net. And the US government must be assured that there is a mechanism in place that makes certain that this is the case. So and and we, be, we believe that we have what we have here on paper fulfills those criteria. Well, giving birth to uh, the kind of organization, given that you're a multi-stakeholder, you're independent, you're global, you've got some of the uh, brightest and most important people in this th th That is certainly the case, yes. Have you thought that such an organization no. could no. an option? No. no, it's a commission. No. It's, uh, we're, we're in the business of providing ideas. And uh, <coughs> as Minister Bilt just said, uh, there really has been a polarization uh, in the debate uh, over the ican iana transition. It's highly politicized in uh, U.S. domestic politics. Uh, Newt Gingrich, uh, you know, has tweeted that this is the, the giveaway of the Internet. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, I, I would characterize the, the position, and it's actually characterized quite well in uh, Mr. Schull's uh, paper, uh, the, between those who say we just stay with the status quo, right? The deadline will pass and nothing will happen because there's, you know, there's no agreement on doing it. The five or six conditions that are laid out for the transition can't be met. And then those who are saying we need to, you know, completely overhaul uh, 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 the uh, uh, governance functions <laughs> of ICANN, we should move ICANN to Geneva. We should set up a whole new set of government arrangements. I mean, there, there are lots of very ambitious proposals out there, uh, many of which do not have, I would say, widespread acceptance, but uh, have very strong partisans. And I think um, uh, the, uh, where the commission has come down is to say, look, you got to meet the deadline. That's going to be absolutely critical because if if the deadline passes and nothing happens, uh, the legitimacy problem is only going to get worse. And if we look at sort of the, co the constellation of forces in U.S. domestic politics, there's no guarantee that a new administration, a new Congress, is going to agree to what President Obama has agreed to in terms of the transition. Uh, so uh, you will be stuck with a status quo and an erosion of uh, political legitimacy. So given that the U.S. government has already laid out criteria for what it would like to see, should we view your recommendations as supporting those, providing uh, additional criteria, independently validating them? I mean, how do we view what we put out today uh, against what's already there and, and this process that probably seems to be in the way with other organizations? Yeah, I mean, we. We support the criteria. We think the criteria are good. Uh, so it's not a question of changing them. Then we can add our own even more specific criteria for the requirements that must be fulfilled. But what we are doing is propose a model that fulfills these particular criteria, um, which is sort of essential, I think, in order to have the US government actually hand over. Um, but also because we think these criteria are correct. We support them. Because that would be to abandon the, what we call the multi-stakeholder approach. Um, Just for the webcast, the question was why not the United uh, Nations? Sorry, please, please go ahead. The webcast can't pick up all the sounds. So. No, I, th I think the, the beauty of the internet has been that it has uh, had, had sort of a, you can say an ecosystem of governance uh, which has not been dominated by anyone. It has not been dominated by states. It has been not been dominated by by uh, business, which has a profound interest in it. It has not been dominated by the tech community either, but it has brought in all of these particular interests, stakeholders as we call them, in a system of governance that has worked rather well. If we hand it over only to states, and there are those that want that, 
I mean, the, the Russians, the Chinese, the Iranians, and the Saudis, to take some obvious examples. And you, when, when you see that particular list, you can also see roughly which interests are guiding them. Uh, then we will lose uh, that vitality, dynamism, and, and, and openness that has been the, at the heart of the internet uh, during the past few decades. Well, if, if, uh, if there would not be a credible mechanism, then I guess the US government will not hand over. Um, and things will continue, continue as they are. I mean, from the point of view of functionality, fine. You wouldn't see anything. But in terms of the trust in the system globally, I think it would be a severe setback. And might open up for states to try, other states to try to grab control over the net. So I think from what we believe, from the point of view of credibility, it is extremely important that this actually happens according to the time plan that has been set. Right. Does anyone actually control the net now? I mean, it seems like it's... Uh... No one controls the net. Okay. Um, that's the beauty of the thing. Uh, but there, there, there are, of course, elaborate mechanisms in place for sort of allocating the domain names and uh, registrars and the technical specifications and all of those highly, highly detailed technical stuff to a large extent. But extremely important that it works. And, and, and there is an ecosystem of different institutions that, um, that make certain that that is the case. Uh, Kevin? Uh There will be, uh, but I mean the transition is supposed to occur in September of next year, and our report is going to be out in the spring of 2016. So I mean our final report is going to be after the event, and that's sort of a fairly good argument for being out now. And um, our policy is that when we have our different meetings, uh, we report immediately what's been our conclusions, uh, and that is part of engaging in a public dialogue. Uh, and then we'll listen to the feedback and listen to the reactions that might be there, and that that feeds into the final report. I think Fedmore would say something as well. Yeah, on, uh, on uh, the uh, public uh, consultation uh, issue, um, the, the Commission has no pretense itself to being a multi-stakeholder body. Uh, it, uh, uh, its work is supported by uh, uh, something called the Research Advisory Network, which mm -hmm. is uh, uh, social activists, uh, uh, experts uh, who are preparing uh, papers on a wide range of topics, uh, subject matter experts uh, that is going to support the work <coughs> of the Commission. Um, one of the reasons why uh, CG undertook a global poll, a uh, survey of public attitudes uh, that uh, was released uh, two days ago, was uh, 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 to, uh, you know, get a good gauge on uh, what are public attitudes uh, uh, towards the Internet, what are, what are the main sources of public concern, and to feed that data into the work of the Commission. Uh, so one of the things we learned is that there's a, a, a growing trust deficit in the Internet as individuals worry about being hacked, having their privacy compromised, uh, uh, either by uh, cyber criminals uh, who operate in the shadows of the internet, or uh, for that matter, governments who are in the business of snooping. Uh, and and um, uh, you know, we learned a lot of other things, uh, and, and that, you know, that, those concerns are feeding into the work of the commission. Uh, as Minister Bilt said, uh, uh, the Commission uh, operates on the principle of transparency. Our minutes uh, uh, are posted on the Internet. Uh, minutes of meetings are posted on the Internet. Materials that are prepared for the Commission uh, uh, in the form of working papers, uh, such as the working paper that supports this communique, that appears uh, uh, on the Internet. Uh, our commissioners are heavily engaged in attending all kinds of meetings uh, 
uh, uh, uh, and, and many of those are what you would call open public uh, gatherings where uh, they are uh, discussing the work of the Commission, getting feedback. Uh, we will be, when we have more work underdone, when we have uh, a draft, we will be engaging in uh, consultation in various forums like the Internet Governance Forum, uh, which is a multi-stakeholder gathering that uh, takes place. Uh, uh, we're in discussions with the organizers of the next IGF to uh, see how we can, uh, you know, put some of our ideas out there. And uh, through the website, uh, of course, uh, individuals can uh, uh, always send us uh, ideas, information, uh, react to things that we're uh, putting out there. So uh, our principle is to be open, transparent, engaged, uh, to do a combination of both polling and consultation in many different forums. Uh, and, uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, uh, the legitimacy of what we put forward will depend, will ultimately stand on the quality of the ideas. Is that fair, Minister? That mm -hmm. sounds good to me. All right, thanks. Uh, at the conclusion of our press conference, if there's no further questions, the, both uh, Carl Bilt and Fen Hampson are available for one-on-one -on -one interviews with any of the media present. Um, and we can also arrange further interviews with any of the media you've been watching online if you just contact us through that uh, chat function. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, have a good day. <laughs>